necessarily going to find a practice partner who will give you a legitimate charge. Does that make sense? It, you're not going to find somebody who really rush you because there's a certain intent behind it and an actual bout. You're going to have a hard time recreating that in the lab. So what do you do? You find out who does it and you go fight them. Does that make sense? You go fight them and you try to apply these ideas to the fight. There are some drills you can do. Like we were doing guard. I mean, we can take a one-step drill. So as he steps forward, I stab him. Okay? So go ahead and step forward. Yeah, that's our first step. Drill. Okay, next drill, you beat, I dodge. Boom, that's the next part of the We can work that and work that and work that until it's muscle memory. And you should. But, but to really throw it out of the lab into the field, you just got to go ahead and risk yourself. And, and, and throw yourself in front of some of these people and deal with them. And try to fight them. I'm going to teach you some footwork. I'm going to show you some different things, some different techniques here now. How do I move my body out of the way of the line? If my body, I want my body to be up or down? Up, up, up. I want it to be upright. I want to be on the balls of my foot. And I want to initiate my movements with my hips. Okay? I don't want to just step and then turn. It needs to be a turn that leads with my hips. That will cause my whole body to fall. Okay? So if I want to step away from this line, okay, I shoot behind. I want to step this way, my hips snap me out of the way of the danger. Does that make sense to everybody? Start the movement here. Okay? If you want to pull yourself back, if I want to pull myself back, I start the movement with my hips and my backwards. Okay? I begin my movement here, he comes forward, whoop, whoop, no. all with my hips, not with my feet. They just follow what my hips want them to do. Okay? I want you all to think when you're standing on guard. You're standing in the center of a compass rose. Not a compass rose. You're standing in the center of a compass rose. Ahead of you is north, that's west, that's east, and that's south. Okay? But I have these nifty little non cardinal directions. Alright? I got northwest, northeast, southwest, southwest. These are 45 degree angles to the straight line. Does that make sense to everybody? They bisect 90 degrees. Come on, guard. I can step to any of these angles to avoid the charge. Here, I just stepped back and left what? The thread of the line did not Please come forward. <laughs> Over here, I can do the same thing. Go ahead. All I can step back. Oh, that was really good. All right. <laughs> the next one, I can step I can step off sides. Here. Boom. Straight out. Right? Or over here. Boom. That makes sense, everybody? And if I'm feeling particularly snazzy, I can step this way. Go. Boom. <laughs> Does that make sense to everybody? I can use these 45 degree angles to get me away from his momentum and let it go. All the way through. Alright, so let's review a little bit because I've nattered for a long while. Um, what's my first step if he tries to charge? What's the first thing I do if I know he charges? Step back. Why? To take more time. To gain measure. First step is to step back. Second step when he tries to beat. Right? Or, sorry, sorry. Second step when his foot comes forward, he dies. Right? Is that, is that right? Okay. What's the next one? If he beats, right? I evade and hit him, right? Small motion versus big motion, right? What's the next step? If he hits me, what do I do? What's that? Avoid. I, not yet. Lower my hips, right? Back my hips out and hit. Okay? Alright. If he gets that and the hip doesn't go, then I evade the monitor. Okay? And all that happens, -da -da -da. it all happens in like a half a second. Okay? I begin in the flow of the fight, he steps, I don't get it, it comes, I fade it, here, and I go. Does that make sense? All of that has to happen with fluidity. Okay? If you are a rock, I will not stop. You gotta be water. Okay? You can't just stand here and hope to take it. You gotta be water. You gotta flow around with it. Sense but it's a little less terrible. I'm trying to tell <laughs> too much. Does anybody have any questions so far? Tell me if you've encountered something that you just can't deal with in this vein from Charlie. Specifically in anything at all? How about you? Yes? Go ahead. So I'm working on a stance that has a pretty low sure. relative, relative to what you're demonstrating. How can I counter a charging bull without having to revert vert to a different stance? Good question. So, Sorry? Uh, Capifero. So, so you, you take a high line? Uh, yeah, midline, mid, midline, yeah. Here. Okay, so I'm here, 
and I need to deal with it. How do I come out of this stance? First, use your hips. So he comes, I use my hips to pull my feet together. Does that make sense? Yeah. My hips pull my feet together, and then I can fall back, I can fall out, I can fall this way. Or, as he comes forward, I can pull my foot entirely back. Does that make sense? Here, and let him come run out. Look how much measure I gave. This is actually one of my favorites. They come forward. Boom! Right there. I keep the distance that he's trying to close, so go ahead and try to get this one. Yeah! <laughs> you see? I keep the distance I'm trying to close, and I have the time to pick my target where I'm going to hit him. Do I want to hit him in the leg? Yeah, that's fun. Something they can't do nothing to. Uh, do I want to hit him in the hip to get him killed? Do I want to hit him in the face? Do that. Alright? <laughs> Understand. Sometimes I'm good at words. The difference between opposition for you is foot in. Does that make sense? It's the only difference. Other than that, you can use almost all the exact same moves. Correct. Correct. And your capital fire stance shouldn't be terribly deep. Thank you shouldn't be terribly deep. It doesn't need to be terribly deep. So, uh, so yeah, that's the answer. You have one? I have one on that. Yeah. So go back to that little bit. Try something different. Sure. First of all, you're on a mid low guard. Right. Okay, what, what if. Okay, so I, I stepped, but I didn't hold back. Didn't catch this. He's not going to keep cross right away. I'm in trouble. I'm in trouble. If he shoots across right away, you just use to, you just use contra tempo. I know. You put me in motion. Yes. That would be right. So I would want to gain more time. So you go here, boom, and I would step back again. Correct. I cannot. That's the answer. That's the answer. I don't want to do too much of that, though. I don't want to do too much stepping back because they will come forward faster than I can go back. Does that make sense? That, that didn't make any sense when I actually uttered it, but I think you all got it. <laughs> he can come forward faster than I can go back. Correct. I'm going to hit. Yes, I'm going to hit the list first. So, how do you deal with that? Only do two and a half paces maximum backwards. After that, you're looking for an angle. Does that make sense? If you can get an angle right away, fantastic. But if you've got a backup to get measured, okay, then you have to back up one, two, and I'm out. All right, I'm the hell away. <laughs> get out of the. Uh, here's the fun part. So one, two, and then I'm out. I'm trying to gain all the measure I can from him. If Go forward. All right, so here, boom. One, two. At any point here that I want to go, I can escape through him. Does that make sense? I can escape through him by going this way and maybe hitting him on the way out. Okay? Does that make sense, everybody? My weight has to connect back so that I can spring forward. But I can't go that way to get that way to get that out. Here's the key though, here's the trouble. The reason why you want to gain as much measure as possible is if you fail in the first step, come on, guard. If you fail in the first step, go ahead. My point is fast. Look how wide my tempo has to be to get to this body. Does it make sense? I must, I must withdraw so that I have no, you know, almost no tempo here. Does that make sense? I have to withdraw my body. Even if I'm going to escape, that's got to be my first instinct is to withdraw. I had this fun little game I used to do. I don't do it as much anymore. But I used to try to stay just ahead of the shot. So they lunge, and I would say just ahead of the shot. Okay? So that they would lunge further and have a longer time going back when I wanted to come to okay? This is a fun thing to do against the shark. Let them come, pull back, and get away. Okay? Let them draw themselves into that final attack. What you don't want, what you desperately need to avoid, is the lunge. You desperately need to avoid the clinch. Everybody know what I'm talking about? Remember, he goes, he goes and beats, he goes and beats inside, and we get real close, and then we're going to and grab your weights. Okay? You have to avoid this moment. How do you get away from this? It's like a ball on a stick. Right? Here, I want to roll around. Boom, let him go. I escape to his safe side. On the inside, I close him with the Bazarathone. Plenty of thing, right here. I want to go this way, not the other one in the face. Okay. Does that make sense? <laughs> Ball on a stick. He wants to come, and I actually actually wind up standing strength to strength this guy. I gotta get away from him. I'm the strong guy, the big guy, the weight, so I can wrestle a little bit. But if you are not, there's no reason to stay there. There's no reason to try to let him be here and try to stab you with this dagger. You know, and all those other crazy things that we see, stupid little draw cuts that we call, right? Yeah, let's go up there. The most commonly used weapon of the charging bull is the longhorn and the bull. Okay? So, remember. Thank you.
here at our church. I'm, I'm, I'm going to say some things now that may, may, may tip you off.